Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid, with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in... English as she spoke. It's nice to get up in the morning when the sun begins to shine. Are you washing the dishes? No, I'm riding a bike. Oh, yes, I can see your real light. Oh, sorry, it's your nose. (laughs) Can I give you a hand? Dry for you? Why? What have you done wrong? What do you mean? When you offer to do any work for nothing, you're either broke, in trouble, or sick me for something. Well, I like that. Me granddad, me own flesh and brown ale. <laughs> all right, all right. Get hold of the tea towel then. And try not to break anything. I haven't broken a single cup all day. <laughs> anyway, why are you washing up? What's the matter with my sister, Scraggy Annie? Scraggy Annie? Uh, <laughs> your, your sister's just taken Alfie in the front room. And I said I'd wash up. It was, oh, it was either that or talk to Alfie. Oh, I see what you mean. You'd sooner be with the dishes than a crackpot. Well, you've got something there. You know, I think he was vaccinated with a gramophone needle. Oh, well, I like Alfie. Well, I'm not surprised the money you've wheedled out of him. Hey, stick your tongue out, will you? What do you mean? You've left a bit of egg on this plate. (laughs) (laughs) All right, sling it back. Right, catch. Jimmy, don't throw. Look what you've done, you wee idiot. Well, you said sling it back. You should have caught it. (laughs) You'll catch it when your mother gets back from the shops. Oh, well, you can get another one. Alfie bought three of those last week after he washed up. Alfie broke three plates? Yeah, he can't catch either. (laughs) Look, now, we'd better get this swept up before your mother sees it. I'm off. <laughs> oh, the shops get more packed every day. Well, uh, don't stop, ma'am. Just go straight through and have a lie down. Yes, I think you... What's that on the floor? Um, lino, I think. <laughs> I mean the broken plate. Oh, uh, the one my granddad dropped. Oh. <laughs> really, Father, why don't you let Susan wash up? Look, Pat, he threw the plate and... After you said sling it over... I didn't mean throw it. You meant sling it? Yes. Not you're asking for it, my lad. All right, all right, Father. Just leave the dishes on the draining board. I'll dry them later. And you go into the living room. Now, look, don't talk to me like that. Oh, I'll finish the job myself so long as you take that young scamp out of here. Oh, come on, ma'am. It's no use offering to help. I've tried. Oh, get into the room till I unpack my bag. All right, I'm going. There's no need to... Just my luck. My granddad's upset her now. If there's anything I hate, it's my mum getting upset when I'm broke. <laughs> and I'll get nothing off Alfie. Three times in two days is too much even for him. I'll just have to talk my mum round again. Oh, I'm worn out. Well, sit down, ma'am, and put your feet up on something. On what? Well, on me, if you like. (laughs) Look, it's no use trying to get around me to forget about that plate. I wasn't doing it for that. I mean, um, I was just doing it because I love you. Oh, yes. Of course. You love me, don't you? Half a mum. Well, um, which is it now? (laughs) All right, I love you. How much? I love you. You're getting no money off me. Well, well, I'll... Go upstairs and get washed. Washed? Yes, face, neck, ears and knees. Why? It's not Sunday. (laughs) Mrs Billington's coming to see me with Mr Peacock. Who? Mr Peacock. The man Grandad met at the marriage bureau. You remember all the trouble you caused. Oh, yes. He's not going to try and marry Beaky off to me grandad, is he? (laughs) They're coming about a poetry festival. It's being held in the Women's Guild Hall, and she wants me to help with the catering. Anyway, never mind why they're coming. Just don't cause any trouble. Well, what a pair. Beaky Billington and Cuthbert Peacock. (laughs) There'll be a few eggs laid here this afternoon. (laughs) What's all the cream cakes doing in the kitchen, Pat? We're having a party. Yes, a hen party. (laughs) What? That'll do, Jimmy. Uh, Mrs Billington's coming with Mr Peacock. In that case, I'm going out. Oh, stop here with me and do a bit of bird watching. (laughs) Now, look, you two, I want some help. For a start, Jimmy, before you go upstairs, go in the front room and ask Susan and Alfie if they'll be going out. If not, 
You'll have to come in here because I want to tidy in the front room before the others arrive. Right, I'll tell the lovebirds they've got to get out because you want to clean out the cage for the two old crows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and don't start any trouble with Susan. You knock before you go in. I'll knock with me hanky. <laughs> Hello, Alfie's left the door open a bit. That'll be so I can make a run for it if the octopus grabs him. <laughs> Well, what do you say, Alfie? Shall we stop in tonight or shall we go dancing? I don't care. But what do you say? <laughs> well, I want to know what you'd like to do. Well, but I'm game for anything. Alfie! <laughs> do you want to go out dancing? Y yeah. Right. But I'd like to stop here as well. Any minute now, she'll clout him with the sofa. <laughs> Hall. Just for once, I want you to decide something. Listen, that girlfriend you had once, um, Agatha, where did you used to take her? Me to their house. We used to play whist with her, Mum and Dad. Every night? Oh, no. Not on Sundays we sang hymns. <laughs> now, there's a lad who's lived. <laughs> well, didn't you ever go out? Ah, well, well, sometimes we had a walk in their garden when it was very windy. Why, when it was windy? Because he lived on a pig farm. <laughs> oh, I'm wasting my time. We'll stay in here. No, you won't. Your time's up. We're closing the tunnel of love for the rest of the evening. <laughs> get out before I tell Mother. Mum sent me in to get you out. Alfie can take your walk round the pig farm. <laughs> if you grunt nicely, they might ask you to stop for supper. <laughs> hey, less of that. What, clear off? It's you who's got to clear off. Come on, let's have you. Let's have you? Why don't you speak properly? Oh, I'm very sorry indeed. <laughs> Listen to posh Anna with a plum in her mouth. Yeah. Now then, Jim, Susan's quite right. Listen who's talking. You sound as if you've got a gobstopper in your mouth. <laughs> don't be so impertinent. Well, you think you're everybody, because you went to Miss Myrtle's school of speech, drama and ballot. <laughs> well, I'm going to see Mother about you. Just wait. Oh, Jimmy, you know you shouldn't be cheeky to your elders. She's not me elders, she's me sister. <laughs> anyway, she gets me down with a lardy da telephone voice. She's like a mob we've got in our school, the poetry reading group. Ooh, what a shower. We have three of them in our class. Chucky Wilson, Nochin Harrison and Wobbly Wobbit Wodgers. <laughs> he was at it yesterday. You should have heard him. My love is like a wed, wed wounds. <laughs> so he put a fwog down his trousers. <laughs> All right, Susan, I'll deal with him. Thank you, Mother. Jimmy, I won't have you being cheeky to Susan. And Alfie as well. All right, Mum. Hear that, Alfie? Don't be cheeky to Susan. I won't be. You are. Look. Will you behave yourself, my lad? Well, she was mocking me. Just because I didn't go to Miss Myrtle's school for dancing and electrocution lessons. <laughs> you did go for one day and they threw you out. That's a lie. I gave it up. I didn't mind reading Miss Myrtle's poetry, but when she tried to get me in a pair of black tights, that was her lot. <laughs> Well, it's very good of you to help, Mr. Peacock. Not, not at all. Is there anything else I can do? No, there, there's only this last plate of cakes. If you put them on the trolley, then we're ready to wheel it all in when Mrs. Billington arrives. Certainly. You know, it's very unusual for her to be late. She's such a stickler for punctuality. Hello, what's this? Have you two been having a crafty go at the cream cakes? We weren't touching the cakes. And neither are you before Mrs. Billington arrives. Oh, let's have one, ma'am. Beaky Billington doesn't eat much. Remember last time when you brought the tea and she looked down her nose and said, well, just a little, I'm afraid I only peck my food. <laughs> <laughs> I giggled and Alfie choked on a chocolate eclair. <laughs> oh, that'll be Mrs Billington now. I'll take her into the front room. Right, ma'am. We'll bring the tea things in. Yes. All right. But just be careful what you say. Don't be charging in there shouting, grub up, muck him. <laughs> All those, all those other charming phrases that you use. Just try and behave like a little gentleman for once. 
Now, go ahead. You push the trolley and I'll bring the crockery. Right, Mr Sparrow. Peacock, peacock. Oh, sorry, cock. <laughs> This poetry festival is going to mean quite a lot of work for me. Uh, pardon me. I hope we're not protruding. <laughs> so it's you, boy. Yes. Major, where shall I deposit the pastries? You are hot. Uh, uh, pardon? Uh, he means the cakes. Oh, uh, uh, put them on the table. Oh, very well. Forward with the crockery, Mr Peacock. Uh. Yes, Jack, that'll be enough. Jimmy, stop trying to be clever. Uh, you were saying, Mrs. Billington. Oh, well, it's going to be a big affair. All the schools are cooperating and providing poetry reading teams. Your headmaster and his wife are very enthusiastic, James. I was talking to them just now. That's why I was delayed. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Treadwell. Hey, they're a funny pair, aren't they? He's little and fat and she's tall and skinny. Hey, hey we call them the tent ball and the Toby jug. <laughs> Stop it, Jimmy. Oh, do sit down, Mr Peacock. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, the schools are very keen, Mrs Billington. Oh, yes, about 20 are competing. But I'm principally concerned with James's school. School? It's more like an open prison. <laughs> Mrs Treadwell has asked me to help in choosing the boys from your sans school who will take part. They will do a poetry reading audition and the best will be formed into a team to recite a scene from Shakespeare at the festival. And the best of British... Jimmy! <laughs> James, you, you enjoy being in this festival, you know. Who, me? You must be joking. I'm sure you would. You see, each school does a scene from a play and the adjudicator awards them points. The what -icator? The, uh, <laughs> well, the sort of referee. As I say, it's terribly exciting. I'm not interested. When you've done your play, you can watch all the others. I'm not interested. A and the team that takes part in the festival has three days off school. I'm not in... A horse! A horse! <laughs> My kingdom for a horse! Or I'll give you half a crown for a ride on your donkey. <laughs> Oh, that's for me. I'll show them how to recite poetry. Oh, not so fast, young man. I'm afraid you couldn't possibly be selected as one of the team. In the first place, we're insisting that only boys from the poetry reading group are eligible, since enunciation is paramount. You what? <laughs> she means you've had it. Unless you'd like to take a crash course in elocution at Miss Myrtle's night school. Not blooming likely. Wait a minute. I just had a thought. James, how would you like me to give you some lessons and try to get you into the poetry reading group? But we're selecting the team in a week. I can hardly see that's time enough to change this young man from uh, whatever he is into someone who speaks English. Oh, he's not that bad, Mrs Billington. Oh, I think you should have a try, Mr Peacock. It might surprise some people. Hey, do you think you could do it, Mr. Peacock? Why not, James? I shall be your Pygmalion. Will you? Yes, yes, I shall make you work very hard. You can call me your Professor Higgins. All right, but you've had it if you call me your fair lady. <laughs> What is good elocution? James, the secret of good elocution is the correct use of the vocal cords synchronised with the proper functioning of the respiratory organs. Well, that's one thing I've learned. What? Ask a silly question and you get a silly answer. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was producing a good sound with the voice goes hand in hand with regular breathing. Oh! Like my granddad when he snores. <laughs> well, I, I suppose there's a similarity. What we have to understand is how this arises. My mum says it's through eating too much cheese for his supper. <laughs> Look, I'll illustrate what I mean. I take a deep breath like this. <gasps> and the words flow naturally as the air is expelled from the lungs. Hey, is your windpipe leaking? <laughs> James, please. Now... I want to test you for incorrect vowel sounds. Is there, is there any particular poem you happen to know? Um, well, uh, there was one I heard at school. I, I think I can remember it. Good, good. Well, off you go and I'll note any mistakes you make. Uh, right, Mr Pigeon. 
Fireman, fireman, ring the bell. Jump on the wagon and drive like... Jim! <laughs> mad! Drive like mad? Yeah, it rhymes with the next line. Squirt your hose and save me dad. <laughs> you see, it's all about him smoking in bed. No, no, James, that's not the kind of thing they want. Pay attention and repeat this after me. How now, brown cow? I'm not saying that. It's daft. Just repeat it after me. How now, brown cow? Oh, all right then. You're the Jimmy. Hello. How now, brown cow? <laughs> Who are you calling a cow? <laughs> James and I are rather busy. Is there, is there something you want? Well, I've called for Susan. I knocked at the front door, but nobody answered, so I went round the back of the pouring rain and fell over the dustbin. So I came back and I tried the front door and it was open, so I came in. I'm all wet. <laughs> you said it. Now let's hear you say this. How now, brown cow? What for? I'm going to teach you how to talk proper. <laughs> oh, no, it wouldn't work. Why not? Well... You've got to take a deep breath, and I don't think you've got the strength. <laughs> I've got the strength to clout you. All right, then, let's feel your muscles. Get off. Come here. Get hey, by the big. Oh, no, they're not muscles. It's your jacket. The shoulder pads have slipped. <laughs> Does anyone mind if I join in? Well, wow, what sort of muscles have you got? My muscles... <laughs> my muscles are my business. Look, stop this nonsense, and let's get back to the lesson. Now, once again... How now, brown cow? I'm fed up with this blinking cow. <laughs> Roll on milking time. There's nothing to it. Listen. How now, brown cow? <laughs> Very good. Now try it with your mouth. Oh, shut <laughs> Hey, Mr. Partridge. Peacock, peacock. I'm sorry, Mr. Peacock, peacock. Um, <laughs> could you teach me to talk, Posh? Well, I don't know, Alfred. Uh, do, you, uh, do you think you could spare the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not taking Susan out for half an hour yet. And I'd like to surprise her, because she's always on at me for not saying the right things. Yeah, and always doing the wrong things. <laughs> you should have heard her telling him off about the way he carried on at the pictures. Well, I'd just get excited in the middle of the big film. I know, but there was no need to shout, Get stuck in, Hercules! <laughs> Yeah, well, no wonder Susan was annoyed. Yeah, and he made it worse. He went to the fish and chip shop to make it up to her, but as soon as he'd gone, uh, our Susan went up to bed. All right, big mouth. Uh, when he got back, he threw a stone up at the bedroom window and shouted, Come down, Juliet, your little Romeo's got a cod and six pennies. <laughs> What did Susan say to that? Yeah, nothing. She, she never heard me. Why, she gone to sleep? No, I was outside the wrong house. <laughs> Jim, tomorrow's the big day. Your audition for the poetry reading team. How do you feel? Oh, it's a pushover. I've got tons of poems up my sleeve. Ah, but it's the way you say them that counts. Uh, don't forget you've got to speak correctly, and Mrs. Billington will be watching you like a hawk. Hawk? You'd better not let me mammy you call her that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? Well, I, I didn't realise what I was saying. No, neither did the vicar. When he saw her kneeling down, he said she was a bird of prey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he never said anything of the kind. I know, but it, it'd have been a good one if he had, wouldn't it? <laughs> Aye, well, let's hear some of those poems in your, your new posh voice. Right. Uh, <clears throat> pin your long holes back. <clears throat> <laughs> the rain in Spain stays mainly on the plain. Well, what do you know? No drain. <laughs> Who wrote that? Well, two people, really. George Bernard Shaw and my Palozzi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, look, Jimmy, you better take this seriously. Mrs Billington isn't there to listen to nonsense. Oh, I've got a point for her. One I wrote myself. 
Beaky Bill went down the hill, <laughs> riding on her scooter. She failed to stop a traffic cop and stabbed him with a hooter. <laughs> <laughs> No thanks, Susan. Uh, no thanks, my dear. That was a very nice meal you cooked. Oh, that was lovely. Especially the pancake. That was a cheese omelette. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's, that's what I meant. It was lovely. Aye, so was the sweet. Delicious. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever had chocolate blancmange. It was a cream caramel. Well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> it was smashing. Before you comment on the cocoa, Alfie, it was tea we drank. Was it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. Is there any more tea in the pot? No, Father, but I'll make some fresh when Jimmy gets back from school. Oh, yeah, he's doing his audition, isn't he? I wonder how he's got on. Well, he was very confident when he was talking to me. You mean big-headed? If they pick him for the team, they must be hard up. Now, now, Susan, he's been practising very hard. I heard him in bed last night. Oh, no, brown cow. <laughs> well, that's what Jimmy will be saying to Mrs Billington. In that case, he's had it. Mind, you'll be glad when it's over. It's a, it's a bit of an ordeal doing an audition. Oh, you're right. I once did one when I was a lad. You did. Don't tell me you recited poetry when you were a lad. Oh, no. No, it was a children's competition at holiday camp. We all had to impersonate film stars. What did you do, Alfie? George Formby? No, not Lassie. Lassie? <laughs> <laughs> That's a dog. Yeah, but I, I used to be very good at barking. I, I was just like a dog. Well, you can tell the, the next door's cat used to spit at me. <laughs> Well, I've heard everything now. Clearly, Seagull. James. That's Peacock, I mean. How did he get on, Jimmy? Oh, he excelled himself. It was a veritable tour de force. You are? He means I played a blinder. <laughs> you don't mean they've picked you for the poetry team? Indeed. Forsooth. It was a doddle. <laughs> well, I can't believe it. You passing the audition. Well, I did say, no. I had Beaky Billington in tears. One tear started rolling right down her nose. <laughs> and it's a brave tear that'll set out on a journey like that. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, you're a terrible laddie. <laughs> I wish I could have heard you reciting your poetry. Oh, you will, one day soon. I'm expecting an offer to make a long playing record, all Shakespeare. It'll be called From Bard to Verse. Oh. <laughs> really, James, but Mrs. Clitheroe, you'd have been proud of him. Why don't you do a poem for us now? Yes, go on, Jimmy, let's hear you. I can't do it here, this is our house. You're all related to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, laugh your blooming nuts off. <laughs> no, of course we wouldn't. No, oh, bet our Susan will. Ah, uh, she won't. Now, will you, Susan? No, of course I won't. Right, come along, James, shoulders back, deep breath, and off you go. Oh, all right, but, but no tittering. <laughs> <clears throat> I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. <laughs> Beside the lake... What was that? <laughs> it was our Susan. She laughed. I didn't. I just thought I was going to sneeze. Mm, I'll make you sneeze. I'll clout you with the pepper pot. <laughs> no, quiet, Susan. No, c carry on, Jim, son. All right, but she's been warned. One more snigger and she's at it. <clears throat> Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll bash her, I will. <laughs> really, Susan? You just ignore it, son. Go on. No, concert's over. If you want to hear me spouting, you can all come to the festival when I'm in the team. They're giving the parts out tomorrow. Well, you're you definitely in it, then. In it? I'll be the star. Prospero. Prospero in the Tempest? Is that what you're doing the scene from? Yeah, it's Shakespeare. Prospero's the magician. I, I think I'll do some conjuring to get the audience going before we start on the chat. James, the immortal lines of Shakespeare chat. James, he wrote the most beautiful words in the English language. You know what? Listen to this. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. 
How about that for a load of rubbish? <laughs> Father, there's the school bus just gone past. Good. Our little star should be here any minute. Hope they've given him that part in the play. Well, I don't know. I was looking at that book of Shakespeare you've got. It's not an easy part, Prospero. He'll have a lot of big words to learn. Well, the magician's arrived. <laughs> He's done his usual trick of trying to make the door disintegrate. <laughs> Is that you, son? Hello, ma'am. Randad. Oh, Jim. How'd it go, son? How did it go? I'm fed up. Oh, they haven't left you out of the team, have they? Oh, no, I'm in it all right, right up to me neck. I only opened my mouth once. But Prospero's talking all the time. I'm not playing Prospero. I'm Ariel, his rotten fairy. <laughs> and all I do is sing one song. Well, the bee sucks there like I In a cowslip's girl I lie Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, Edwin Apps as Cuthbert Peacock, and Rosalie Williams as Mrs Billington. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. <laughs> Present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in. It's the thought that counts. There you are, Mrs. Clitheroe. Twenty filter tips for Susan, an ounce of thick twist for old Peter, a quarter of jelly beans for the wonder boy himself, young Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. O'Reilly. Here's ten shilling note. I didn't think you'd be open on a boxing day. Oh, I'm not staying open all day. Oh, what time are you closing? Opening time. <laughs> <laughs> you mean at the Rose and Crown? Aye, that's right. As soon as they open, I shut. And as soon as they shut, I open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you stop pulling my leg and listen. I want a word with you about that Christmas present my wonder boy of a son gave me this year. Oh, you mean the bottle of toilet water? That's right. It's very expensive stuff. Oh, yes, it was. And I believe he had some trouble getting it. Well, he did now. But he was determined he wasn't going to disappoint his darling mother, even without carol singing. Carol singing? When was that? It was that very foggy night at the beginning of last week, when you couldn't even see your hand behind your back. <laughs> I remember that night well because I ran into them myself as they were singing. They? Was he with one of his pals? No, the other bird who was wobbling with young Jim was that well-known cuckoo, Alfie Hall. <laughs> there they were in the thick fog, coughing the way through good King Wenceslas. Brightly shone the moon that night. When a poor man came in. <laughs> Hey, look, it's not funny. You trick me into your daft carol singing, you drag me out in this horrible fog. I'd, be, I'd go home if I knew where my bike was. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll find it. Now we'll do old Wenceslas again. Second verse. I sing the page boy part and you're the dozy old king. Now, off you go. <laughs> Alfie, where are you? Come here. We haven't done the first Noel yet. But you, man, I'm going home just as soon as I can find me back. <laughs> <laughs> Think he's found it. Oh, oh, my head. Oh, oh, Jimmy, come and help me. Oh. Don't worry, Alfie. <coughs> I'll find you. Your voice will guide me to you. So just keep groaning. <laughs> Be careful. You can't see a thing here. 
I was right on top of me bike before I... Ow! Get off me, folks! Sorry, Alfie. Are you all right? No, but I will be when I get home. <laughs> you, you tricked me into coming here with you. You said you only wanted a lift to go and get a Christmas present for your mum. I know, but before I get the present, I've got to get the money. And I won't get the money if we don't get singing. So stop moaning and get your tonsils jumping. <laughs> no, I won't. I want to go home. I told you, you can go home. If you lend me 15 bob for me mum's toilet water. I haven't got 15 bob. If I had, you wouldn't get it. Yeah, and I'm doing no more singing. Oh, so that's it. And I thought you loved our Susan. Well, I do. No, you don't, because if you did, you'd love me mum as well and help me to get her a nice present. Hey, now, look, I love Susan and I love your mum. We're a family, all for one and one for all. Love me, love my dog. But it's not my dog, it's me mum, and you don't care whether she smells nice behind her ears because she don't love her. Look, I love Susan, I love your mum, I even love you. If, if you like, I love your granddad, if you, I love the whole blooming lot of you. <laughs> oh, Alfie, such passion. Hey! What? Does me granddad know you've got a crush on him? <laughs> I didn't mean that. I was on about you. Oh, Alfie, I never knew you cared. Oh, I give over. But you don't know where we are? I'll bet we are lost. We're not lost. It just seems like it because of the fog. Oh, Mary, this London's a wonderful sight. <laughs> now there's a fella who's really lost. He thinks this is London. <laughs> the people all work and be dead. Who's that? We're singers like you. Get off our pitch. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Get over, it's Mr O'Reilly. Yeah, it's Jimmy Clitheroe. What's happened to your voice, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> You sound just like that twit, um... It's Alfie Hall! Yes! That's the name of the twit, Alfie Hall. <laughs> Harry, Harry, where are you? Who is that with you? It sounds like young Jim. Oh, heck. Hello, Grandad. You're going home early. Did the landlord want money for the drinks? <laughs> ah, is you all right? What are you doing out in the fog at this time of the night? Alfie, tell him why you brought me. Yeah, I, 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 I brought him out carol singing. Carol singing? What for? Because I love you. All of you. <laughs> well, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy's mum, that is, and I'd like her to smell behind her ears. <laughs> I mean, you know, with, with, with tonic water. The, the toilet water. I mean, but it's a gift. Come on, all of you. Let's get on with the carol singing. Oh, good. Uh, you and Alfie start singing. Grandad and me will knock on the doors for the money. Uh, just a minute. Uh, this is Station Road. Yeah, that's right, Grandad. You won't collect any money at all in this street. All the houses are empty, waiting to be pulled down. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the people have all moved away into the new flat. And Alfie was so mad... He groped in the fog for his bike, sat in it the wrong way round, and said somebody had pinched his handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> so, the carol singers didn't raise any money then? Not a single penny. But you know, young Jim, never say die. Undaunted by his first setback, he immediately went into the street trading business. You mean he, he had some sort of a stall? That's right, on the pavement, and not 20 yards from the police station. There's guts for you. <laughs> what was he selling? Last year's Christmas decorations at bargain prices. <laughs> what a boy. What great perseverance. What strength of character. What low cunning. I'm sure he's got some Irish blood in him. Get your Christmas decorations here. Don't go elsewhere and buy rubbish. Come and get it from Honest Jim. Now <laughs> oh, then, my lad. What's all this? Only three more shopping days to... Oh, hello, Constable. <laughs> what can I do for you? I want to have a look at all this junk on the pavement here. Why? What do you want to buy? <laughs> I don't want to buy anything. I want you to move along. Why? So you can put your stall up. <laughs> look, I'm not selling anything. I want threepence off you. Oh, so that's what you're mixed up in. A protection racket. <laughs> I've read about you in the Sunday papers. Look, get this rubbish off the pavement before I throw the book at you. Why? What am I doing wrong? What are you... Listen. Street trading without a licence, obstructing the pavement, causing a breach of the peace, selling defective goods, defrauding the public. Shall I go on? 
No, thanks. <laughs> I'll need Perry Mason to get me off as it is. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this about uh, frauding the public with detective goods? Well, we've just had a customer of yours in the police station. Uh, was it a girl in a gym slip with a pigtail? Oh, you remember her then? Of course I remember her. She's the only customer I've had. <laughs> And uh, do you remember what you sold her? Eh? Oh, yes, a little pot fairy for the top of her Christmas tree. With only one leg? Eh? <laughs> oh, heck, I should have waited for the glue to set. <laughs> That's why I'm here, for her threepence back. Fancy flogging her a one-legged fairy. Oh, well, it's not really a fairy. It's Long John Silver in his silk underwear. <laughs> Look. I don't want to hear any more nonsense. Hand over that threepence and I'll let you go. I'm not giving you the threepence, it's mine. Hand it over. Excuse me, Constable, but he's my brother. Quick, Susan, fetch the police. Tell them they've got to arrest one of their bobbies for theft. <laughs> he's pinched me threepence. Oh, shut up. I'll tell Mother and Grandad about this and I hope you get smacked for it. But I was only trying to raise some money so I can buy my mum a nice Christmas present. Yes, but you can't go selling things in the street. Well, Perhaps I could do some odd jobs for you at the police station, like uh, polishing your buttons, putting new peas in your whistles. <laughs> or uh, have you any bloodhounds that you want taken for a walk? Susan certainly didn't tell me about all that, the young scamp. I know, be fair, Mrs Clitheroe. It was all in a good cause, your Christmas present. Well, yes, I suppose so. But what a trick to get up to, <laughs> just to raise money. Oh, I believe he had quite a few bright ideas for raising quick money. Really? There was like uh, standing in the GPO with his tongue stuck out as a stamp licker. <laughs> Flogging earplugs to nervous old ladies so they wouldn't hear the bang when they pulled their crackers. <laughs> and finally walking into the bank with a stocking over his head. Oh, I don't believe you. It's the truth, Mrs. Woman. And the next time I saw him was on Christmas Eve. I was just about to close the shop when he came bounding in like a greyhound with the wind behind us. Mr. O'Reilly, thank goodness I caught you before you closed. I, I've come to get me mum's present. Oh, very well, Jim. Uh, what was it again? A bottle of that right posh toilet water. You've still got some for sale, haven't you? Indeed I have, I think. Oh, now, let me see. Ah, here we are. No, we're not. She'd feel silly smelling of lighter fuel. <laughs> now, where did the wife move those bottles? Oh, hurry up and find it, please. Well, now, where the devil... It's always the same when the wife moves anything. You put it where you can find it, and after she's finished moving it, you look where you left it, and lo and behold, there it is, somewhere else. <laughs> well, it can't be on the shelf all over the door because there isn't one. And even if there was, it wouldn't be on it because there it is, by the window. What? <laughs> oh, aye, a bottle of toilet water. Now, I'll just give wrap it for you, Jim, while you're getting the 15 bob out. I presume you did get the 15 bob, Jim. Look, Mr O'Reilly, it's, it's only at times like this when you realise how many good friends you've got. And, and when you've got good friends, you don't have to worry about money, do you? Oh, you've borrowed the money from friends, then. Oh, it's true. I'm dead lucky to have such smashing friends. Are you one of my friends? <laughs> well, I'd like to think I am. Well, anybody would be lucky to have you for a friend, Mr O'Reilly. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Like I said just now, nobody would have to worry about money if they had friends like you. <laughs> well, you know what they say, Jim, a friend in need is a friend indeed. I couldn't agree more. I bet you'd help any friend of yours who had no money. That I would, Jim. That I would. Good. Well, lend me 15 bob for my mum's present, <laughs> old friend. Is there anybody in? Alfie, are you there? Come in, Jimmy. The door's unlocked. Well, that saves climbing through the window. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the kitchen doing some ironing. Right. Are you taking in washing now? No, I'm not, funny. And I don't want any trouble. I'm, I'm trying to press my trousers and it's very tricky. Wouldn't it be easier if you took them off first? <laughs> <laughs> the ones on the ironing board, I mean, they're under that damp cloth. There's no need to swear. Damp, I said. That, but you, you press them with a damp cloth to keep your trousers from getting shiny. My man presses mine with an iron. Ah, ah. I'm just waiting for the iron to warm up. Anyway, what do you... Be... Hey, what's happened to you? 
Your blazer's filthy, a button torn off, there's a black mark on your shirt. You're looking at a hero, Alfie. I've just rescued Ozzy from the duck pond. What's he doing in the duck pond? The backstroke. <laughs> Your big funny duck pond isn't deep enough to swim in. Well, the ducks manage. A duck isn't a lad. It is if it's a drake. <laughs> I mean, Ozzy isn't a duck. No, but he's quackers. <laughs> he fell in and I pulled him out. He grabbed my coat and ripped the button off. You, when, when you pulled him out? No, when I pushed him in. <laughs> you, you, you pushed him in? Oh, no, not really. It was an accident. I threw his cap in, only he was wearing it at the time. <laughs> but yeah, little hooligan, I suppose you've come here for me to sew your button on so your mother won't find out. Yes, please, Alfie. But there's something else as well. I'm not washing your shirt. No, you see, the reason I had a fight with Ozzy was because he brought me Mum's Christmas present. What? The, the present you bought her? Yeah, 15 blooming bobs worth of toilet water. Ozzy ran up behind me, jumped on me back, and the bottle flew out of me hand into the duck pond. So I sent Ozzy in after it, but the bottle was smashed. Yeah, well, the little devil jumping on your back, you should have clouted him. I did, that's why I jumped on my back. I mean, uh, after. So, so you started it. Well, you've asked for trouble and you've got it. I know. Still, it's lucky to have friends. Yes, it is. What do you mean? Well, if a friend was in trouble, you'd help him. Anybody would. I mean, especially at Christmas. The time of goodwill to all you men. You've had it. And you've had peace it. on the... You've had it. You what? You're getting no 15 bob off me. Well, what can I do? It was my mum's favourite toilet water. It has a smashing pong. <laughs> talking about pong. Are you burning wood on your fire? <laughs> well, the fire's not on. I've just had the electric fire going. Hey, Matt, I can smell wood burning. You, wood and plastic. You, would you say it was like a plastic-covered table? Y yes, I but... You what? I think your iron's hot enough now. <laughs> the kitchen table's on fire. Now look, Susan, if you're waiting for Alfie, I'll have to go. If I don't collect our Christmas drinks from the Rosen Crown early, they might, they might sell them out. Oh, I'm not waiting any longer. I'll walk down the road with you. <laughs> Knowing Alfie, he might arrive tomorrow. Hi, <laughs> and he'll probably call next door to find out where we live. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, were you going to a party or something? No, we said we would take our Christmas presents round to one or two friends and then come back here. Anyhow, I'm going. Come on. Oh, uh, just uh, you just reminded me of something. I forgot to put this present in the sideboard. It's a purse for your mother. Ooh, who from? Ah, your Auntie Ethel. Well, at least she sent me the money, 30 shillings, and asked me to buy something for your mother. Uh, whatever I thought she would need. Oh, of course she's on her cruise by now. Aye. Oh, Christmas at sea. Lovely. Oh, I don't know that I'd like it. Oh, it can be great fun. I remember one Christmas. Oh, I was in an old sailing ship. Whiskey, 12 shillings a bottle. Beer, sixpence a pint. And at midnight, they all sang my favourite song. What shall we do? The drunken sailor. Shut up, Jimmy. Oh, it's you, cheeky face. I'll feed me granddad's talking to you. Hello, Mr. Sailor. Drunk Sinclair. Get Mr. Granddad. Oh, dry up, Alfie. It's my impudent brother you want to speak to. Now, now, sister dear. Christmas is coming. The geese are flying south. So please put a sock in your great big mouth. <laughs> you want to put a sock in it or I'll put my fist in it. What, Susan's great big mouth? Yes, so just get... No, <laughs> no, it's not Susan. Susan's what? Susan's great big mouth, I mean... <laughs> Alfie, why don't you shut your... Oh, I mean, don't argue with him. Come in, Susan. Yes, come on, Alfie. Yeah, yeah. Where am I going? You're going daft. Take her with you. <laughs> Alfie, we arranged to take the presents round tonight. Oh, don't say you've forgotten what we said. Oh, no, I, I remember what we said. But I've forgotten to bring me presents. That's typical, if I may say so. You may. <laughs> uh, don't be so clever. Uh, did you remember to get your mother's present? Um, yes, uh, I got it, didn't I, Alfie? Yes, then Ozzy jumps on his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have you brought, Mother, then? Um, it's a secret. 
Uh, what have you two bought her? Oh, I bought her a house coat and Grandad got a skirt. Oh, well, that'll be a change from his kilt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good skirt. Sorry, Mr. Dinkler. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Alfie. I'm used to my grandson's comical remarks. Anyway, Jimmy, I hope you got her something nice. Oh, it was. Is. Uh, have any other presents arrived? Ah, well, there's just one from Auntie Ethel for your mother. Oh, is there? Auntie Ethel, who's uh, on the cruise? Aye. Well, are you coming, Susan, or what? Yes, I'm coming. You better go home and get your presents, Alfie. You're right, Susan. Ah, uh, well, I'll get my coat on then, my dear. And, Alfie, meet me at Mary Carter's. I'll wait there for you before we go to Teddy Daxon's and Marjorie's. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. At uh, Marjorie's? Yes, before we go to Mary Carter's. Alfie. You're there, Teddy Jackson's, I mean, before Marjorie's, and then we'll... I'll wait at Mary Carter's, and not a word from you, Jimmy. All right, all right, keep your wig on. <laughs> hey, uh, what's Santa Ethel's present like? Um, is it nice? I suppose so, I haven't seen it. It's wrapped up in the sideboard. Why, couldn't you get any paper? <laughs> Come on, Susan. Well, right, Grandad, don't forget, Alfie, Mary Carter. Right, Susan, Mary Carthus. Hey, what are you going to do about your mother? Her uh, present? You can give it to her. You heard, Susan? It's in the sideboard. Heh. <laughs> what do you mean, Auntie Ethel? You can't pinch that. I can borrow it. <laughs> I've got to do something. It's Christmas Eve. You, what, you mean, say it's from you? Well, what about Auntie Ethel? She won't be back in England for three weeks, and then I'll buy something else, give it to my mum from Auntie Ethel, and say it was delayed in the post. Yeah, it'll never work. Of course it will. You heard, Susan? It's wrapped up. Nobody knows what it is. My man won't even know Auntie Ethel's sent a present. It's not right. Alfie, all's fair in love and war. Maybe, but this isn't either. <laughs> it's both. I love my mum, and if I don't get her a present, my granddad will declare war. <laughs> I'd sooner fight my Auntie Ethel than a wild Highland bull. <laughs> Uh, Pat, my dear, are you awake? Yes, father. I'm just putting my dressing gown on. Merry Christmas, love. Merry Christmas, father. Is Susan up? Aye, ah, she's just in the bathroom. Oh, Merry Christmas, mother. Merry Christmas, granddad. Merry Christmas to you, my dear. <laughs> Merry Christmas, darling. Is my watch wrong, or is it really eight o'clock? Five past, I make it. Well, fancy Jimmy sleeping in after six o'clock on a Christmas morning. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> ah, well, he was probably too excited to sleep last night. Let's wake him now. Right, you are. Come on, Jim, it's Christmas morning. He's not here. He's not in bed. Well, he can't be up or else we'd have heard him playing with his presents. All right, now what idiot gave him those things for Christmas, I wonder? <laughs> well, uh, I'm afraid it was uh, this idiot, Pat. Oh, Father, you are the limit. Well, let's get downstairs before he sets fire to the outpost. <laughs> yeah, come on, I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell him to play with them outside, Pat. What, and ruin everybody else's Christmas? <laughs> no, I'll tell him to keep them for New Year's Day. Then he can wake you up on Hogmanay. Oh, no! <laughs> Have mercy on the poor old idiot. <laughs> right, you two, shall we charge the cavalry together? Right! Clear the rose! Ho! Jimmy, will you stop the war for a minute? Hi there, partner, me old Indian scout. And the two squaws, Mother Golden Hair and Susan Blackhead. <laughs> How? And a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, son. 
Merry Christmas, Mum. Merry Christmas, Grandad. Merry Christmas, my boy. Merry Christmas, Jim. And a Merry Christmas to you, Scra- Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to kiss you? Of course. Oh, well, it's only one a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how charming you are about it. Now, all your presents are in piles. I've stacked them up and I haven't opened any. Thank you very much. Mind, I've felt them and I've been guessing. <laughs> well, let us guess for ourselves. Oh, I wouldn't tell you, ma'am. But don't worry about having that old dressing gown clean. Jimmy! What did I say? Oh, Angus has sent me a pipe. Oh, which one of the three did he send? I don't... Oh, you mother <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look what Alfie sent me. What? <laughs> oh, Mum, it's a locket on a chain. Well, what's funny about that? Well, inside it says, to Mother. He's given me his mother's present. <laughs> hey, Grandad, open mine, that one over there. No, what's this, then? A knife? Yeah, but it's special. and uh, That's for tapping your tobacco down, and there's a corkscrew and a bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> Very suitable, I'm sure. Uh, and it's got your name and address stamped on it. Well, I, can't, I have a name I can understand, but why my address? Well, so that when you give the bottle opener and, uh, and corkscrew a bash in, they'll know where to bring you home. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I suppose I asked for that. But I think I'll go and put the kettle on and get the cup. Oh, thanks, Father. Ma'am, uh, this is yours from me. Right, I'll open it now, then. <laughs> oh, who can that be? It might be Alfie coming to wish us a happy Easter. <laughs> Don't start. Oh, see who it is, please, Susan. Right, Mother, it's probably the milkman. Well, son, now for your present. Oh, a purse. It's lovely, Jane. You like it, Mum? Oh, it's beautiful. But how did you manage to afford this? Oh, nothing's too good for you, Mum. <laughs> you won't be long, Pat. And you've put a card inside, son. Merry Christmas, love... Ethel. You <laughs> what? <laughs> What's this, then? Oh, the purse. Ah, that's your Christmas present from Ethel. She asked me to choose it, so I hope you'll like it. Father, Jimmy gave me this as his present to me. Yeah, what? It, it, it was a mistake. Uh, you see, um... It's I... Mr. O'Reilly, Mother. Ah, Merry Christmas to one and all, the complaints of the season, and may peace and love be with you always. Hear, hear. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas to you, Harry. Merry Christmas, Harry. And a happy Yuletide to you, lad. And here's the present for your darling mother. My present? Yes, the present your son bought. Yeah, yeah the guy bought. Oh, I mean, uh, yes, the guy bought. Well, I, I wasn't sure whether Jim had given you the wrong one yet. Well, yes, he, uh... he... He was a joke, you see, a Christmas joke. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, have a laugh. <laughs> oh, look, it's my favourite toilet water. Oh, thank you, son, oh, your little teaser. <laughs> yes, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Mr O'Reilly, um, what is all this? I thought you'd realised. The other bottle was one my wife took out of the window, a dummy, a replica filled with tap water... This is the real one. Oh, oh, you're a darling man. <laughs> oh, God bless old Royally. Three cheers for green and yellow. And home rule for Galway, baby. Jabez <laughs> Of the Clitheroe Kid this week, where Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, Harry Bailey as Harry O'Reilly, and Fred Gaunt as the policeman. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. We present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... The Sunday I Met Mum Friday.
picket. A friend of mine picket, and I'm sorry, and I can't say any more. You'll have to say some more when Jimmy comes down. He'll go mad. He's talked about nothing but Robinson Crusoe for the last week. I can't get him today. It's Sunday. But I'll go to the box office first thing in the morning. They'll be sold out for a week by tomorrow morning. Well, it's clean all over. I hope you're satisfied. What a daft idea of having a bath to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing daft about it at all. Of course there is. You'll still make me wash my neck again in the morning. <laughs> you know, I'm sure my neck's shrinking. <laughs> oh, no, that's enough. I'm sick and tired of hearing you complaining every time you're told to get washed. Father, this is no time for you to be telling Jimmy off. Why, hasn't he washed his neck? <laughs> now, look here. Uh, Look, Jim, you know I hate to let you down when I, well, to disappoint you. Uh, yes, Randolph. Well, no, well, regarding the pantomime Robertson Crusoe. Uh, oh, yes, it's kind of you to take me, Grandad, and I won't forget it. I will, uh, the, uh... Because it'll be smashing, the storm at sea, meeting man Friday, the cannibals attacking, and his daft brother, Billy Crusoe. <laughs> uh, well, you see, you, you, you know yesterday... Yeah, uh, New Year's Day, the morning after Hogmanay. <laughs> yes, well, I, I went out at lunchtime. And, and came back at closing time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I went out to get the tickets for the pantomime, but you... I went in the road and crown and forgot. I went in the road and... No! <laughs> Jimmy. What? Did you know he didn't get the tickets? Yeah, Mr. Higginbottom told me. Well, it wasn't your fault, Grandad. It was my mum's. My fault? Yeah, sending a Scotsman for tickets on New Year's Day. <laughs> Don't you be cheeky. Anyway, you seem very cheerful about not going to the pantomime. Ha-ha, <laughs> that's because I am going. When? Well, I'm not sure until the tickets arrive, with, which should be any minute now. What? Well, who's bringing the tickets? Oh, you'll see. Just get the money ready. There you are. There's my friend with the tickets. You shall go to Robinson Crusoe. The pantomime you'll see. So give three cheers for Crusoe. And a couple of bob for me. <laughs> I'll open the door. You will not open the door in your pyjamas. I haven't got a door in my pyjamas. <laughs> I've got a hole in the back of my shirt. But... <laughs> ah, but that's another tale. <laughs> I've had some jokes in my time. Well, don't tell them here in front of me, ma'am. <laughs> oh, out of my way. I'll go and see who your mysterious friend is. You're a cheeky young scamp, you are, you know. I, I don't know where you get it from. Well, you're me granddad. <laughs> no, no, don't go too far. I'm only kidding, granddad. Come in, Alfie, dear me. Why didn't you tell me you were downstairs? Because it isn't. Of course it is. I am. I mean, I'm me. I bet it's him. Alfie. We know who you are. We're talking about Robinson Crusoe. That's right. I'm in. Yeah, not him. I mean, I've got them. Well, see a doctor and get rid of them. <laughs> He's got the tickets he means. That's right. Five tickets for the fan show tomorrow night. Who told you to get them? You did. Well, you didn't tell me, but you said. But when you were moaning to me and soon about your granddad forgetting because his brain was wet. For what? <laughs> no, 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 not, not wet, but boozed up. Drunk. I mean, I mean, you were well and you would forgotten. So, Jimmy, I was too booed to get my tickets. Yeah, Jimmy was right then. Alfie, why don't you put a bandage over that hole in your face? <laughs> no, no, stop arguing. Alfie's got the tickets and that's that. Yeah, I haven't time to argue anyway. I've got to go and make a phone call quick. Oh, what a carry-on I've had. Oh, hello, Susan. I didn't see the door. She didn't come in the door. She crawled out of the woodwork. <laughs> Where have you been, Susan? Mary Carter's house to get some tickets for the pantomime. You what? I bought five tickets for the pantomime next Wednesday night. You've not bought tickets as well. Nobody asked you to get them scraggy neck or your daft boyfriend. But, Jimmy, you said you'd ask them. Or one of them or somebody. Oh, hey, yes. I'd better go and make a phone call. Oh, too late. I'll go to the door. I'll tell him we don't want any. Who? The bloke at the door. Um, the milkman. Uh, the man. Um, your mother told you. You're not going to the door in your pajamas. I'll see you as well. Oh, well, in that case, I'll go to bed. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Just a minute. What have you been up to? I was always going for thing in the morning. It's a bit late, isn't it? Who are you talking about? The, the milkman at your front door. It's not the milkman. Oh, I thought it was funny. No, it's the dustman. He's come down to your head. <laughs> oh, 
Come on in, Harry. It's Harry O'Reilly, Pat. Ah, good evening, sir. I just popped in for a second to see you for a minute, because I can't stop. More than an hour. <laughs> well, well, then, if you've got to go, Mr. O'Reilly, don't let us keep you. I'll, I'll see you to the door. Right you are. Well, cheerio, everybody. It's been nice seeing you. Wait a minute. I'm going before I even arrive. <laughs> I haven't told you why I'm here yet. Oh, that's all right. After you've gone, we'll have a little game to see who can guess what you can. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, will you stop this nonsense? Now, what is it, Mr. O'Reilly? I brought five tickets for the pantomime. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, yes, I have. Five seats for next Friday night. <laughs> yeah, I've got five tickets for Monday, so you've got five for Wednesday, and now you've brought five for Friday. Well, it's none of my business. But don't you think three times in one week is overdoing it? <laughs> oh, look, Harry. Jimmy should never have asked you to get these tickets. You might know. Oh, I don't know. Whenever I try to help, something always goes wrong. Every time I do a good deed, I finish up being sent to bed. A good job I'm not a boy scout. I bet if I helped an old lady across the road, I'd get knocked down coming back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fed up with a lot of them. I wish I was on a desert island, like Robinson Crusoe. Still, that's no good. In the pantomime, all the family go with him. So I'd still be stuck with my mob. Although, uh, there is a shipwreck. So Susan might go for a swim if I pushed her. <laughs> my, my daft brother couldn't be called Billy Crusoe. He'd have to be called Alfie. And my granddad would have to be the captain. Oh, I wonder if Alfie's a good sailor. Singing, that is making me rash, Dale. Well, that's why your face is all green. I thought you'd be looking through the portal when they painted the ship. <laughs> it's, it's the way the ship's rolling, Miss Thundercat, stand it. Rolling? We're still in the harbour. <laughs> what are you doing, the bare biscuit? When she goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh, shut up, Robinson. Look, you're Alfie Crusoe. I don't want the other sailors to say Robinson Crusoe's brother's a big soft land lover. Be tough like me. No, I'm, 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 I'm not used to sailing round the world like you. <laughs> I noticed that last night when you tried to sleep in your hammock with both ends tied to the same hook. <laughs> hey, now look, don't you start. I've had enough trouble with the captain. What? Don't put Wash Sinclair being on at me again. Yeah. It, it, he was on lookout on the bridge. I mean, he set me up for the crow's nest while well, the crow pecked me, and I fell right on top of the captain. <laughs> <laughs> I bent his telescope. <laughs> no wonder he's been in a bad mood all afternoon. Hey, you better not let him catch you here talking. I'm working. Our oh, man sent me up from the galley with his bucket as well. Ah, I've got to throw it over the side. Oh, well, get on with it. And don't let go. Oh, very funny, you are. Ah, I'm not as daft as you think you're to think I am. There it goes. <laughs> and back it comes. <laughs> yes, so you threw it against the wind. Deal with it, Shiver me timbers, you scrawny, idle-pated son of a creature. <laughs> if you miss my dicks again, I'll have you keel hold. Flogged at the mast and put in iron. Ooh. Hey, Robinson, that that's the captain. Get away. I thought he was Malcolm Muggeridge. <laughs> you better keep out of his way. He's not forgotten you giving his rum ration to the ship's cat. Ah, they were having kittens. Yes, yeah, so was he when he saw you give it away. <laughs> He's got rid of you if you've been able to get a full crew. Ah, no wonder you couldn't get a full crew. You wouldn't tell anybody where we're going. Well, it's a mystery trip. Crusoe's waiting for her bucket. Ah, oh, listen. It, it is the captain's granddaughter, Sophie Sue. 
have named her after the ship. Hmm, with her face, you should have named her the wreck of the Hesperus. <laughs> you shut up. I'm a strong to her, both ways across the other side of the ship. I am coming no further. <laughs> Better off than the last time he fell overboard <laughs> when we were in dry dock. <laughs> Robinson! Robinson! Where's your brother Alfie? Has he emptied my bucket? Yep, he's in the sea rinsing it out. <laughs> oh, there was no need to go to all that trouble. He could have rinsed it out under the pump. Alfie fell overboard and pulled him out of the... Hello, hello, hello! He's dumb. Bring a win, that thing comes shit. Can we have man pride with chips? Bring a win. My... <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, back at the ship, a concert was in progress. Though I'm far across the sea, yet my heart will ever be. I came in dear old Scotland with my info. Thank you, Captain Sinclair. And now the one that none of you have been waiting for. He will dance the hornpipe with his feet. <laughs> Concert. It's a parrot singing stormy weather, you just look at it. Up and down, Jim. Keep it lower than I thought. There are no white folks. Just grab a boy and jump in. Right, come here, Robinson. <laughs> Get off me, you twit. Oh, Robinson, what's to become of us? I mean, she shipwrecked on a desert island. It's the only survivors. Will I ever see Salty Sue again? Of course not. She sank. That's why we're here. I mean, the girl, not the ship. I, I knew she was a wreck before we started. <laughs> why did you keep snogging with her? I mean, the ship, not the girl. I never saw her again once I jumped overboard. Oh, I watched her turn over. I saw all the barnacles on the... The girl, not the ship. <laughs> Never mind the girl. We want to find something to eat. It's three days since we finished the parrot. Hey, 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 hey no, no, wait a minute. The, there's a footprint in the sand. It's from somebody's foot. <laughs> Marvellous. Now lie down and rest your brain for a week. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a, it's a human foot. A person. So somebody else has been eating. Yeah. Look, oh, there's his other footprint. Oh, there's two more over there. Right, Alfie. We know what we're looking for now. A native with four feet. Exactly. No, <laughs> no it's his track. The, the, they go around this rock here. Hey, wait a minute. I can hear him coming. He's singing a native chant. Quick, hide in this bush. Quiet now. <laughs> Hello. He's coming. He's dead. He's out. Footprints in the sand. There's two there, two more, and two little ones. Now, what animal has four big feet and two little ones? <laughs> we fooled him, Alfie. He'll be looking for six one legged monkeys. <laughs> oh, shut up. Hey, hey, look at him. Blonde hair, pink face, the, the way he, he talks. I've never seen an native like him before. Have you never been across the sea to Ireland? <laughs> what? 
He's Irish, you fool. Who's that in the bush? Who's that out there saying who's that in the bush? <laughs> who's that in there saying who's that out there saying who's that in the bush? Tell him, Alfie. It, it was Robinson. It, it was him saying who's that bush. You see it. You're saying who's in the, the, this bush. The, the, this one in it. Says Preservus. Says there's no for grown leprechaun. <laughs> Not a leprechaun, it's just that he's got a pointed head. <laughs> what are you doing on the island? Yeah, we're on a mystery trip seeking fame and fortune. He's Robinson Crusoe. He's me dad's brother, I'll think. That's right. Shut up. <laughs> Where are you? Ah, that's a question. All I know is many years ago I woke up on the beach with the wreckage of a ship all around me. An empty whiskey bottle in each hand and a packet of fags in the other. <laughs> I was captured by a cannibal chief who gave me to his daughter, saying, How do you fancy him between two slices of bread? <laughs> Fortunately, too, her mother hadn't baked that morning, and while they were waiting for the bread man, they just waited to marry me and go on a diet. But when the mother came in on Christmas morning with a hungry look in her eyes and a packet of stuff in her hands, <laughs> I was off. I couldn't get a canoe, but they had a pet eagle, so I grabbed it by the legs. Gave it a kick. It was a kickstarter. <laughs> it flew off with me to this island, unfortunately, when it was a thousand feet up in the air, my hand slipped, and I fell. How uh, was it you were killed if you fell a thousand feet? Ah, that's where I used a bit of Irish cunning. I waited till I was three feet from the ground, and then I jumped. <laughs> Jump three feet. <laughs> Alfie, you've got your right Irish one here. Uh, what's your name, mister? Ah, that's something I'd forgotten. The shock of my experience gave me amnesia. And besides that, I can't remember anything. <laughs> well, we've got to call you something. Yeah, how about Billy Liar? <laughs> Wait a minute, I know. Today's Friday. That's what we'll call you. Friday. No, I like that. But I should have a second name as well. What about Saturday? <laughs> no, I've got an idea. I do remember that when I was little and I had 12 <laughs> brothers and sisters, not 12 of each, 12 between them. Right, there were 12 brothers, except five of them who were sisters. <laughs> there was Mary, that was one. There was Bridget, that was two. There was the twins, Molly and Theresa, that was three. And Kathleen, that was four. No, there was five of them, I know. But the youngest was Mary, that's one. There was the twins, that's two. Bridget, that's three. Kathleen, that's four. No, the Stephanie was five. Because a different one used to take me out in the pram every day of the week. <laughs> there was Mary, that was one. Bridget, that's two. There was Kathleen, that's three. There was the twins, that's four. Uh, uh, that's a hell of a thing. One of them must have been a boy. <laughs> What's that load of Irish gods got to do with your second name? Ah, well, I was the 13th child, so that's what you'll call me, Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Alvis. Have you seen any other survivors from Irish kids? No, all I've seen is two women and an old man in a skirt. But, but, <laughs> but they had no ship, they swam here. Oh, well, they, they must have left. You are? Listen, you Tipperary twits, they're the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Well, follow me. I'll take you to the cave they're in. It's the third cave on the right past the giant coconut tree. Don't go in the second cave. That's occupied by a lion. Retired, of course. And nice and navy you couldn't wish for. Oh, I'm fed up with this desert island. So long we've been here. Oh, stop moaning. The sun's shining all the time. We've got plenty of food. No school. And every night I put the gramophone on and play my eight desert island discs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right for you. You're the boss. We, we, we have to do everything you say. Well, that's only right. I'm Robinson Crusoe. It's in the book. He's our man. Ah, the cook. Uh, what's for dinner today? Just the same as yesterday. Dark bean soup, grilled octopus with coconut sauce, fruit salad and crab milk cheese. Oh, it's not good enough. Where's the kitchen boy, Captain Sinclair? He's down on the beach, milking the crab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he is now. Oh, it's no use. I'm worn out chasing after those crabs with a milking stool. <laughs> well, you've got to do something to earn your keep besides brewing that seaweed whiskey. <laughs> well, what can I do? I'm too old to climb trees. 
And you took the other job away from me, lighting the beacon every night. Well, I couldn't stand it after you ran out of matches, seeing you lying there in your kilt, rubbing your legs together. <laughs> Go and fill me some grapes. Well, that's not anything of the kind, Grandfather. He's got no right to order you about. Mrs. Craggy Sue, any more from you and you'll be wearing a new fur coat. I'll feed you to the lion. Yeah, you're going too far, Robinson, talking to Saucy Sue like that. Yes, son, you're getting far too big for your big leaves. Ah, <laughs> we've stood far too much from you. What is this? Mutiny? I'll have you flogged from the yard arm, Mr. Christian. <laughs> Arr, Jim, lad. <laughs> I'll have you all pickled in rum. <laughs> You'll all do what I tell you. No, 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 no. Please, 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 please. And why is it matter? Be quiet a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Sunday? Get a It's Friday. Hey, you don't sound flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be soft, Ray, and I'll give you a carrot. Oh, Robertson, master. I have terrible news to impart. Something that will turn your hair white with fear. Don't tell me United are out of the cup. <laughs> the cannibals are here. <laughs> what can we do? We'll all be killed and eaten. Never. No savage is going to make a haggis out of me. It's all you worry, too. I will protect you with my strong right arm. <laughs> Hard luck, Sue. That's you for the pot already. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I know this mob. They're the wife's relations. <laughs> they won't kill and eat at all. They'll just eat one and make the rest slaves. You mean only one of us will die? Yes. So what we need is a brave volunteer to sacrifice his life for the others. Well, as your leader, there's only one thing for me to say. Three cheers for our hero, Alfie. Hip, hip, hooray! Hang! Hip, hip! Yes, just, just a minute, I, I didn't volunteer. Yeah? Grab him, Mum Friday. Yes, yeah, yeah, don't stop with it. I'll let you all get off. I'm too young to fly. Yeah, You're not going to fry it. That's why you're in the pot. You ought to be in here. For your relations. Anyway, I bet they'd like a bit of Irish stew. <laughs> Robinson, since you're our hero, I forgive you for all the cruel things you've said. Aye, and I'll drink your memory with my seaweed whiskey. Oh, dear. After watching this, I'll never drink soup again. My brave son. Goodbye. This is the end. It's the end? Oh, good. That's the end, folks. Everybody down for the finale chorus. One, two. Sing, brothers, the sing, sisters, we're all leaving today. Involved with the Clitheroe Kids this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, and Harry Bailey as Harry O'Reilly. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. All right, pantomime that was. Ooh, when I woke up, I was still shaking with fright because the dream was so real. I thought to myself, Kaya, I can still feel that hot water in the cooking pot round my legs. <laughs> but I was right. My hot water bottle was leaking. <laughs> so... Present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in One Good Twist Deserves Another. I'm coming. It's the milkman. I'll pull his leg a bit. Milk. Sugar. <laughs> Pardon? Granted. <laughs> what are you playing at? Same as you. It's a guessing game, isn't it? <laughs> Look, it's Saturday morning. I've called for your milk money. There's nobody in but me. Oh. 
P. Don't start that again. I'm trying to get finished early so I can get to the big rugby match this afternoon. Borough versus Rovers? I'm going there myself. I might see you. Not if I see you first. <laughs> Who's taking you, your granddad? No, he doesn't like the rugby ground. There's no bar. <laughs> Daft Alf is taking me. Oh, you are Susan's boyfriend? Yep. I heard him tell her he might go when I was, um, dusting the front room keel. <laughs> Does he know he's taking you with him? Not yet. It's a surprise. <laughs> you mean shock, don't you? Anyway, I didn't know you were keen on rugby. I wasn't, till I saw it on the telly last week. Hey, what a game. Did you see it? I was there, on the ground. In fact, I was right near television cameras. In a way, I thought I recognised the voice. You what? You. You kept shouting, Get stuck in, never mind the game, get some arms and legs broken. <laughs> and that was at half time when the band was on. <laughs> You never heard me shouting that. Mind you, right about one thing, it was a rough game. Ooh, you're not kidding. <laughs> hey, do you remember one bloke pulling another bloke's shorts off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hey, did you see it on the screen then? Yeah, just before the commercial break. Off came his shorts and then a voice told him he'd look five pounds thinner in a girdle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, very comical. I like that. Here's another big laugh, huh, Susan? <laughs> Just behave yourself. Can I help you, Mr Bradshaw? I've called for the money, twelve and fourpence. Oh, well, I haven't got any money. Mother and Grandad are coming down the street. Ask them. Thanks, I will. Cheerio, Jimmy. Cheerio. I'll see you this afternoon. Look for me on the cop. I'll be on a policeman's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then. Take this shopping bag off me. It's heavy. Me? Carry that lot? I'm a lad, not a mule. Oh, get out of my way. Oh, that's better. You might have helped me. Oh, all right. I'll help you to get your breath back. Open your mouth and I'll get my bicycle pump. <laughs> Very funny. I hope you're not going to behave like this this afternoon, showing us all up. You what? Are we all going to the punch-up? Well, we're all going to the vicarage. You won't see any fight in there. Look, you know why we're going to the vicarage. That's where we all meet to get the tins and the flags before we go out collecting. Well, what are you talking about? If you mean for the pensioners' fun, that's next week. It's this afternoon. We have to be at the vicarage at two o'clock. Where were you going? To the rugby. Pardon? Uh, I think I'll go to rugby. There's a big public school there. <laughs> My dear little brother, going to public school? Well, why not? My granddad goes to a public house. <laughs> Look, funny boy, you promised Mother you'd go and help collect money for the pensioners, so whatever plans you've made this afternoon, forget them. Oh, why didn't somebody remind me about this? Well, you would have been reminded if you would have been in the house last night. Mrs Eccles called. Fatty Eccles? She called? I wonder why the pavement was cracked. <laughs> Don't be so rude. She called to confirm that we'd be doing the street collection today, and Mother said she could put all our names down. Well, she can cross mine off. I've got other things to do. And anyway, they don't need other collectors when Fatty Eccles is on the job. She can raise a fortune on her own. What are you talking about? Well, you've seen the size of her muscles. She doesn't go around shaking a tin. It's a dustbin with a slit in the lid. Oh, stop talking nonsense. Help me put these things away on the shelves. Put them on yourself, scraggy neck. Temper, temper. Well, I'm fed up. I miss all the fun. And the broken legs. Hey, that's an idea. What are you mumbling about? Mind your own business. That's it. Have an accident. Come in, Father, and stop grumbling. The man can't give us the milk. Well, it's daylight robbery. Twelve and fourpence a week for what we drink. Grandad's right. Let's all drink beer. <laughs> and I'll keep all the money from the empties. Oh, be quiet. Susan, when you go out again, will you pick up the meat? Right, Mother. I'll call in now on my way to the hairdressers. I thought I'd have my hair done for this afternoon. Ask him to give you a Percy thrower. What sort of a hairdo is that? Short back and sides with a lawnmower. <laughs> oh, ignore my dear brother. He's just being reminded that he's going out collecting this afternoon, and I don't think he's very keen on the idea. Is that right, what Susan said, Jimmy? Of course not, Mum. I can't wait to get out there. You'll hear me. 
Please give generously. Give till it hurts. If you can't give money, I'll have the buttons off your shirts. <laughs> oh, dear, what a boy. After all, I'll be doing good. Collecting for all the dear white-haired old pensioners and a few bald-headed ones as well. <laughs> you don't mind collecting for the pensioners, then? Of course not. After but... all, every day I'm nearer to being a pensioner myself. I reckon I've only got about another 63 years, two months and 13 days to go. <laughs> and then I can smoke thick twist at half price. <laughs> hey, you sound like you're going to enjoy yourself. Time's getting on. You'll have to start getting ready soon, Jimmy. Yes, ma'am. Just as soon as I've fallen off this chair. I just stood on this chair to put Susan's things away. Bring the other stuff in the pantry, Father. All uh, right, you are, Pat. Right. Here goes. Knock this chair over and then yell like mad. Oh, help, my leg. Oh, my ankle. Oh, no, what's oh, happened? Oh, I was standing on a chair putting them things away for our Susan and, and, and I slipped. Oh. Are, are you all right, Jimmy? Oh, I think so. What a daft trick to do. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll help you up. Oh, thanks, Mum. I'll just... Ow! Ow! Oh, it's his, it's his ankle, Pat. It, it feels better when I take my weight off it, but when I stand up like this... Ow! 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 <laughs> it's like somebody shoving red-hot needles in me. No, no, I'm pretty sure it's not broken, Pat. He, he just wrenched, wrenched it a wee bit. Well, it does seem better now we've got him on the settee. Are you all right, Jimmy? Yes, ma'am. The throbbing's gone off a bit and I can waggle my toes again. Oh. I'll soon forget about it once I'm out collecting for the pensioners. What? <laughs> You're staying in this afternoon. Oh, but, Grandad, I want to go. I'll be all right. If I can't walk, I'll get Fatty Eccles to give me a piggyback. <laughs> no, silly. You'll be spending the afternoon in the city with your foot up. But where? Oh, I see, I see what you mean. All right, then. You three go out and do your best without me. Oh, we don't want to leave him on his own, Father. Susan had better stay at home with him. Uh, no, no, no. There's no need for her to stay. Why not? Oh, well, I, Alfie'll be passing here on his way to the match later on. He could call in and see if there's anything I want. Yes, that's a good idea. I'll give him a ring. You'd better get ready, Father. Uh, I'll just away upstairs and get changed. Uh, you'll be all right, uh, Jim, if Alfie calls. Oh, yes, Grandad. Dead right. Just what I need. Somebody with plenty of money and no brains. <laughs> Jimmy, get your mother phoned me and asked me... Did she? Well, that was nice of her. Come in. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I'm later than I said I'd be, but I got held up at the... At the... Did you now? People are always getting held up there. I know. You know, when I got there, there was a queue halfway around the world. I don't know. I always go to the other place. <laughs> oh, I see. No, I don't. Hey, what are you putting your cap and coat on for? I'm going to bed. He buys you, daft looking. I mean, um, didn't my mum tell you? Well, all she said was. Well, there you are then. That explains it. Right, I'm nearly ready for off. I don't get this. You look puzzled, Alfie. Can't you remember where the rugby ground is? Ah, of course I can. Well, what's the hold up then? Don't tell me you've forgotten your wallet. No, it's, it's in my pocket. And you've come on your motorbike. Y yes, I have, but... Well, there is no hold up then. N no. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on. Right, after you, Jimmy. Who was right, please, when your mum rang up and asked me... I'd be, uh, just a minute. And what did she ask me? Yeah, and she couldn't have asked a nicer fella. Now, move out of the doorway. Yeah, wait a minute. She asked me to call because she said you couldn't go out. Well, of course I couldn't go out. I had no motorbike to go on, had I? Well, no, but... Well, now that you're here, I have, haven't I? Well, yes, but... So that's what my mum must have meant, wasn't she? Well, yes. Well, shut up and pull the door to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's going to be a good match, Jimmy. Hey, that is where I'm taking you, to the rugby match. Yeah, that's right, Alfie. Now, let's get moving. Hey, just a minute. Uh, who's this coming up the path? Jimmy! Oh, I've just caught you. Oh, no, it's Fatty Eccles. <laughs> what, what does she want? From the look of her hundred weight of slimming pills. <laughs> I, I can't stop Mrs Eccles, so cheerio. Oh, I thought I'd just pop in while I was passing. Hello, it's Mr. Hall, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, Mrs. Fatty. Slimming cake. 
Eccles. I've just called to go to the vicarage with the others. You know, Mrs. Clitheroe and Mr. Sinclair and Jimmy and his sister. I thought, why don't we all go on the same bus? Because there isn't a bus big enough. <laughs> you what, Jimmy? Oh, no, it's a fuss, all this collecting for the pensioners. Come on, Alfie, let's go. Hey, just a minute. Aren't you going with the others? No, they, they've gone away going to the rugby. My army uncle! <laughs> Mr. Hall, your ankle? Uh, no, he's talking about my ankle, um, are you, Alfie? Yeah, look, all I know is Mrs. Clitheroe rang me and said... And she was dead right. <laughs> That's why Alfie's just going to give me a turn round the garden, aren't you, Alfie? Nah, I don't know. I'm all mixed up again. Here, Jimmy, is he all right? It's his memory. He can't remember his helping me to exercise my bad ankle. Oh, I see. I'm sorry about your memory, Mr. Hall. Have you tried bathing it? You know what? <laughs> you see, he can't even remember that. No, you, Jimmy. Has your ankle been bathed? Oh, uh, no, my ankle's not that bad. Let me see. Oh, he's got no bandage. Oh, that's taking chances, you know. Come on, I'll see to it. Oh, but Mrs Eccles, we're late. We've got to go. Oh, but you're not going anywhere. Give me a hand with him in the house, will you, Mr. Hall? Well, we've only just come out at Oh, somebody give me a white flag, I surrender. <laughs> I'm very good at first aid, though I do say it myself. I'll soon have your ankle done properly. But he doesn't need doing it. It's you that needs... Well, I mean... Um... <laughs> you don't need to stay and do this. Never take chances, I always say. No, it won't take me long to do, and then I'll be off to the vicarage to join your mother and the others. Just open the door, Mr. Hall. Jimmy, all bathed and bandaged for you, just like I said. Yes, and it's only taking you half an hour. Well, you can't be too careful, I always say. You know, Mr. Hall, I once had terrible time just through neglecting an ingrowing toenail. Oh, well, couldn't you cure it? She couldn't even see it. <laughs> Well, I'll go now and catch up with the other collectors. Moustache, give that ankle plenty of rest, Jimmy. I'll see myself out. Cheerio. Bye-bye, Mrs Bathbun. Deckle. <laughs> Cheerio. Right, quick, Alfie, get these bandages off my ankle. Ah, but she's only just put them on you. Your ankle will never get better. It doesn't have to get better. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, hurry up. The match will have started by now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've just been thinking. Good old Alfie. <laughs> You'll try anything once, will you? <laughs> now, look, funny boy, I, I don't get it. The, the others go out collecting, but your mother phones me because you can't go, but you can go to the rugby match, but when we meet Mrs Eccles, you can't, all because of a bad ankle you said you had that you haven't, and you, what does it all mean? <laughs> Confucius, he say, man with mindful of litter, no wiser than bloom used for sweeping up litter. You are. You're as daft as a brush. <laughs> on the throttle, Alfie. We've missed the start of the match already. Yeah, I'm not going any faster on these wet roads. Yeah, and this doesn't seem like a shortcut to me. Of course it is. Once you get round this corner, it's a straight run. Well, I hope so. Just speed up and don't argue. Slow down. What? The road's flooded, you daft. Oh, oh, right. Oh. Abandoned ship. I'm <laughs> soaked to the skin. Well, take it off and hang it out to dry. <laughs> Give me a piggyback and get this bike started again. Well, I, I think the bike should go now. I've dried everything. Have you got the water out of your head? Oh, yes, I shut up. <laughs> oh, well, come on. What time is it now? It's only half past... Oh, let me watch it stopped. Oh, I bet it's got water in it. Yeah, it'll be the spring. Hey, <laughs> 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 that's very good, that water in this watch. <laughs> oh, Bell, if we don't get cracking, we'll be too late to hear the final whistle. Now nah, we, we should be there in two minutes. I hope we... Oh, no. Pull up. You are? Pull up. Stop. Whoa, Neddy. <laughs> well, what are you stopping me for? We're nearly there now. 
I thought you might like to see that church clock. You can't tell the time, can you? The big hand. Is... Yeah, I know, funny. It's half past four. Oh, heck. Exactly, you nut. If you turn round, we'll just have time to get home before the mob arrive back. Thank you for a lovely afternoon. <laughs> that can't be out. Yeah, I'll start her up then. Still, it's not every day you can go sailing on a motorbike. <laughs> now, look, I I'll miss that much as, as well as... Jim, it won't start. It won't start. <laughs> Is the petrol in? Yes, there's petrol in it. Well, if it doesn't start on petrol, we'll try something else in it. What? Your blood. <laughs> got back before your family came home. It's no thanks to you and that lump of scrap iron you call a motorbike. You'd be better off with a hoop. Yeah, now, listen, it'll be a long time before you go on that scrap iron again. I'll see to that. Oh, is Alfie Walfie getting cross because Jimmy called his bikey bikey then? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Here, have a piece of pork pie. No, thanks. Your mother probably wants them for later. Well, she shouldn't have left them on the table then. But if nothing, because she's only bought two. You won't be able to eat any tea when your mother comes in. Get away. <laughs> You've seen too many telly adverts. <laughs> You're talking to a lad who can eat meals in between meals. <laughs> well, I'll be glad to get in front of that fire, Pat. Oh, the bike. Hey, hey, up till I get on that couch. Oh, and don't forget, Alfie, we haven't been out of... Oh, heck, my shoes. You are? My shoes are covered in mud. Don't let them in. Hold the door. What, 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 what do you mean? Hold the door till I get my slippers on. Go on. Oh, all right, but what, what do they think's happened? Don't argue. Grab the handle. I'm damn doing pretty up. I wonder why Elfie came back. The door's stuck. Stuck? What do you mean? Well, I mean, I can't open it. Oh, heck, there's a knot in my loose. <laughs> Let me try, Pat. Mm, it isn't locked. I can feel it move. There's somebody holding this door. Uh, but, but yes, it, it's, uh, but it's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now, where's my slippers? What's the idea, Alfie? What are you holding the door for? One minute, Alfie. For one minute? I mean, just, <laughs> I mean, just a minute. Alfie, what's wrong? Tell her it's the carpet. It's the carpet, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, where the heck did I put my slippers? What's wrong with the carpet? I don't know. I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, ah, there they are, in the fireplace. It's in the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Alfie, you can let them in now. Oh, thank goodness. Come in. What on earth were you doing, Alfie? He uh, was trying to put the carpet against the door so I wouldn't be in a draught. Oh, dear. Poor little Jimmy mustn't be in a draft. That's right, so shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. We don't want any rows. Well, you come back to see Jim then, Alfie? Oh, we, 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 we came back together. <laughs> well, uh, I mean... Um... Well, we've been together all the time. Um, Alfie didn't leave me, did, did you, Alfie? Oh, no. no. I didn't leave him. Oh, that was nice of you, Alfie. No wonder we couldn't spot your bike at the ground. We went to the rugby match. You what? You said you were collecting with the vicar. We were, at the rugby match. But why didn't you tell me you were going? We didn't know until we met the vicar. Anyway, what difference would it have made if you had known? I wouldn't have had to lie. Uh, no difference. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> you, you at the match and him pretending that he him, him with a bad ankle. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's funny, Alfie. Jimmy having a bad ankle. No, no, it, it isn't that. It, it, it's it's ever uh, bad. I, I just felt like laughing because because <laughs> <laughs> he saw Susan's face. Yes, Alfie. But shut up. <laughs> well, it was a great match, Alfie. You'd have enjoyed it. Far more than sitting here all afternoon with my cheeky brother. I thought you were just calling here for a few minutes. Well, I did. I mean, I thought I was. <laughs> well, what did you do all afternoon? Watch the telly, I suppose. No. Uh, yes. What? Yes. Uh, no, uh, we mean, no, we didn't, but yes, you suppose we did. That's right, I think. <laughs> You're sure you were here all afternoon, Alfie? Uh, uh, me? Well, we've been together since he came every minute. Yeah, that, that's true. 
Oh, now look at this, B. Will you go and see Susan? Right, Mother. And you sit down. I'll get the tea ready. Oh, will you? What are you going to burn for us tonight? <laughs> now, listen, Jimmy. Stop being cheeky about Susan's cooking. She made a lovely trifle yesterday. Trifle? That was an egg custard that went wrong. <laughs> she just slopped it about in a basin and banged in a spoonful of jam. <laughs> don't tell lies. Susan's making the tea, and if you don't want it, you can do without. All right, I'll starve. Till the chip shop opens. <laughs> what do you mean, starve? You've just had two big pork pies. Pork pies? Uh, yes, Mama. I felt weak, so I had the pork pies you left on the table. I didn't buy any pork pies. Did you, Father? Me? No. Susan must have brought them in. Oh, Mother, it's Mrs Eccles. Come in, please. I wonder what she wants. She must have heard it's feeding time. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Pat. Oh, no, not at all. Sit down. Would you like a cup of tea? Susan, just making some. Oh, no, thanks, Pat. I've just called to collect the parcel I left earlier. Well, I'll start on the tea anyway, Mother. Are you sure you won't have some, Mrs. Eccles? Oh, certain thanks, Susan. Well, how's your ankle, Jimmy? All right, what do you mean? Oh, my ankle. Oh, I'm much better now, thanks, Mrs. Eccles. Oh, you've taken the bandage off, I see. Oh, yes, um, and Alfie took it off because it was too tight. What bandage? Oh, I bandaged Jimmy's ankle earlier on. Oh. I met him and Alfie as they were going out. Going out, you see? Uh, to the door I felt faint with the pain, so Alfie took me to the... <laughs> he took me to the door for some fresh air. Uh, didn't you, Alfie? Maybe, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. I, I did take him to the door. But you came out wearing your crash helmet, Alfie. Yes, well, that's because he was scared of the birds. Uh, <laughs> <monkey dog. laughs> yes, well, I mean... Uh, uh, birds? Yeah, one of them pecked his head the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it was a woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a caution, you are. <laughs> well, anyway, I've got to be going. I just came to pick up the pies I left when I came in to bandage Jimmy's ankle. Pies? Pork pies? Yes, I put them on the table, I think, and then forgot them. Oh, so that's it. I'm sorry, dear, but I think my greedy son has eaten them. Well, well I didn't know they were fat at Mrs Eccles' pies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you shouldn't take things without asking. Ah, oh, now, Peter. He wasn't to know I'd left them. Still, I'd better get some more before the shops closed. They were for my husband's tea. Oh. That's why I called back for them this afternoon, twice while they were out. <laughs> but, uh, Jimmy and Alfie were in all day. Well, they must be deaf then. I rang the bell about ten times. <laughs> but I'd have heard you. Oh, uh, unless I was asleep. Oh, was Alfie asleep as well? Well, he's always half asleep, so he hasn't thought at all. <laughs> now, don't be funny, I wasn't asleep. Well, why didn't you hear Mrs. Eccles then? Well, I. I, 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 I <laughs> Alfie, <laughs> you didn't sneak out with me asleep, did you? Of course I didn't. Y you know very well, when you were asleep, we were both riding other... What am I talking about? <laughs> uh, there's something fishy about all this. <laughs> That's what I think. Alfie, did you go out of the house this afternoon? Well, of course I did. Yeah, big fibber. Well, there's your answer, Mrs Eccles. Just a minute. Alfie, you said you were with Jimmy all afternoon. <laughs> well, I was. Oh, I'm going. I can't stand any more lies. You get back on that couch till we... What happened to your ankle? You know what happened. I felt... Oh, oh, yes. Uh, I'm walking. Uh, yeah, it must have got better uh, a bit. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I can feel it again now, though. Uh, Alfie, where did you take Jimmy this afternoon? Well, we set off for the rugby match, but my bike broke down and we... Oh, heck. <laughs> Love her now. Yes, ma'am, you see, my ankle wasn't hurting, and I think the bandage Mrs. Eccles put on must have... You scheming little monkey. So, you pretended to hurt your ankle just to get out of collecting for the vicar's fund. Well, well, I... I... What was that, Mother? Uh, did you say he was only pretending he'd hurt his ankle? Yes, she did, the little twister. There's nothing wrong with him, yet. Oh, dear, I feel this is all my fault. It is, if you get your pies in your trunk and bag... <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? You'll go and get two pies and you'll pay for them out of your pocket money. Oh, but, ma'am... And when you get back, you'll have your tea standing up. Cos you won't feel like sitting down for a week. Well, that won't help the old age pensioners. He ought to still go out and collect for them. Yeah, yeah, she's right. Give us a tin and I'll start now. Oh, not now. Tomorrow. You can come collecting with me. Oh, 
yes. What a good idea, Susan. Aye. <laughs> That's better than a smacking that he'll forget in five minutes. You mean you won't clout me, honest? No, I'll let you do as Susan says. Oh, Sue. Good old Sue. My kind, pretty sister. <laughs> Very nice, Susan. I hope you'll remember this, Jim, and not say nasty things to her in future. What? Say nasty things to my beautiful sister? Oh, never again. That's all right then, Grandad. Mum, I'll go collecting tomorrow with Susan. We'll be at the vicarage first thing in the morning. Well, there's no need for that. Tomorrow's all arranged. The crowd of us are meeting at the school sports ground just before the match. Oh, we'll see a match as well. Oh, Sue, you're not just a sister. You're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, all's well that turns out for the best. Well, but ends best. I mean, um... It's a long road that has too many cooks. Yes. <laughs> All's well, then... Oh, don't bother. Well, Sue, my Sue, what time does the match start? Half past two, but we'll meet the other six collectors at two. Oh, right, and, um... Oh, is it a rugby or football? Oh, neither. You and I and six other girls will be collecting at the ladies' hockey match. <laughs> what? Just me and a bunch of soppy girls. That's right, Jimmy, and you needn't bother to pretend to break anything because if necessary, you'll go on a stretcher. Don't worry, I won't pretend. I will break something. Scraggy Annie's blooming neck. Come here, then. Those involved with the Clitheroe kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan, with Betty Allberge and Joe Gladwin. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. <laughs> And the vicar with cotton wool in his ears. <laughs> and I had to go around collecting because he kept watching me. And the things they put in my box. Buttons, hair grips, safety pins. One put chewing gum in. After she chewed it. <laughs> I threw the can away and dived at her. Then the vicar came up, told us to stop fighting and, and made her put me down. <laughs> well, she was a big girl. <laughs> Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross and Diana Day in... Give a Little Whistle. Hello. Is that Oswald Higginbottom on the phone? <laughs> I have a telegram for you from James Brain of Britain Clitheroe. <laughs> It reads, we'll meet you tonight at Civic Hall to see the amazing Marvello, the great hypnotist. Stop. Your turn to pay for night out, so bring plenty of lolly. Stop. I thought you'd go quiet when I mentioned the money. Stop. Hey, listen, Ozzy, he'll enjoy this hypnotist fella. He puts people under his spell and they all go dozy and daft and start doing stupid things. Hey, that's funny. You're under his spell and you haven't seen him yet. <laughs> you what? What do you mean we're not going to see him? Eh? Decorating the church hall for Sunday? Well, I didn't know it was tonight. You what? You're passing the curate's message on to me? Oh, uh, sorry, Ozzy, I've gone very deaf. Can't hear a thing. Not a dicky bird. So I'm afraid I haven't got the message. Eh? Same to you, Codzed. <laughs> I'll go to the Civic Hall with Daft Alfie. So the best of luck tonight with Cuthbert the Curate. Come on, Father, let's get our coats on. I'll be with you in a minute, Pat. Hey, Mum, you're going early to the Women's Guild, aren't you? I thought the wish drive didn't start till half past seven. Your granddad and I have to get there first, before the others arrive. 
Why is it your turn to mark the playing cards? <laughs> <laughs> We've offered to get everything ready. And we'll be tidying up after the West Drivers finish, so we won't be back till about ten o'clock. Oh, I'll be in bed by then. But you needn't wake me up to tell me what happened. I'll read it all in the Sunday papers. West Drive raided by cops. <laughs> it was only a cover for strip poker. <laughs> Old Scotsman caught playing the vicar at Snap. <laughs> in his best and spurring. <laughs> Well, what's all the row about? Oh, it's only him acting the fool. Just because we're talking about the whist drive. Come on, I'm nearly ready. Ah, well, I'll just slip my overcoat on. I hope I win something tonight for a change. I know how you can win, Grandad. Do what the hypnotist would do. The one who's on at the Civic Hall tonight. What are you talking about now? Grandad could put the fluence on the other players. You are in my power. I am your master. I command you to send me a spirit message. If I'll lead with my ace, have you got any trumps left? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy. But I'm glad you mentioned tonight, though. Before Susan went to her Auntie Mabel's this morning, did she give you a message? Uh, I don't remember any message. Hey, Grandad, this it was this marvellous. He's called the Great Marvella. He'd put you to sleep in no time and think of the money he'd save. What do you mean? Well, it usually takes six pints of beer to put you to sleep. <laughs> Look, funny boy, did Susan say anything to you this morning when I was out at the shop? Uh, yes, yeah, she did say something to me. Well, what was it? Uh, she, she said she wouldn't be seeing my cheeky face for at least 24 hours, and it was marvellous. But being a little gentleman, I didn't reply. I just lifted up a suitcase for her and dropped it on her foot. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, now look, about tonight. Yes, I was telling you. It's seven o'clock at the church hall. No, ma'am, he's doing his show at the civic hall. Oh, heck. I haven't got to go to the church hall, have I? Of course you have. It's tonight the boys are decorating it for the festival on Sunday. That's right, and I told the curate he could put your name down on his list of volunteers, Jimmy. Oh, but I'd be no good at putting decorations up. It's all climbing up ladders, and you know me. I can't stand heights. I even go dizzy if I wear me thick stockings. <laughs> <laughs> You are going to the church hall tonight, my lad, and don't you dare try and get out of it. Uh, I'll see who it is. But... Hello, Mr. Sinclair. Could you grab hold of a leg, please? <laughs> oh, it's you, Alfie. But, but, but it's his table Susan asked me to get, to stand on. No, not Susan stand on, a record player. I brought it on the bus and the conductor made me stand on the platform with him. Every time the bus swayed, I rang his bell with one of the legs. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down here, Alfie. We'll take it upstairs later, after you've given your tongue a rest. Come along, Father. We really must go now. Oh, come in, Pat. Well, cheerio, you two. Cheerio, Grandad. Now you, Alfie. Cheerio, Grandad. Yes, Sinclair. Uh, you missed it, I mean. Don't forget about tonight, Jimmy. I won't forget, Mum. And well, what is it about tonight you've not got to forget? I've forgotten. <laughs> now, where's that phone number? Where are you ringing? Ah, here we are. Mr. Thompson, curate. Six, seven, four, seven, eight. Mm. And well, what are you ringing the new curate for? Because I'm starting to get a very bad cold. Oh, so you're ringing the curate to see if he can cure it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. It's a joke, you cure it. <laughs> Get your call. <laughs> oh, don't some mothers have them? <laughs> Quiet, it's ringing at the other end. Ah, but you still haven't said why you're phoning him. Because I'm not ringing him, and his granddad is. Oh, I think it. I mean, granddad's gone. Oh, you're quick, aren't you? Listen, the curate doesn't know me or my granddad, and we've both got bad calls. <clears throat> Hello, is that you, curate? <clears throat> My name's Peter Sinclair. <clears throat> My grandson, Jimmy Clitheroe, won't be coming to church hall tonight. Look, what the heck are you doing? Me note, shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> I, uh, he's got a cold as bad as I have. I, his eyes are running, his nose is running. So far, it's neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a joke. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. I'll tell young Jim. Hey, good night, dear. What did he say? 
tell the boy that we shall all miss him and may he soon be restored to full health. <laughs> We've got a right reverend one there. <laughs> oh, and a right crafty one here. What, what, what's going on? Well, Alfie, I know you're at a loose end because our Susan's away, so I pretended I wasn't well and went to all that trouble just so as I can give you an enjoyable night out. That's very big of you. Where are you taking me? Uh, read this handbill. I got it from the Civic Hall. Um, one night only. The great Marvello, master hypnotist. He commands, you obey. It's right, Alfie. He makes the audience clasp their hands together, and when he puts the fluence on them, they won't come apart. Ah, rubbish. He will reveal your thoughts. He will probe the inner recesses of your subconscious ego. It is Marvello's proud boast that he has yet to explore a human mind that will baffle him. And that's why I'm taking you, Alfie. <laughs> Join it. Yeah, well, considering it's cost me two bob for us bus fares, ten bob for seats to come in here, a shilling for my souvenir programme, and half a dollar for your sweets, ice cream and nuts, I'm having a marvellous time. <laughs> there you are. I said I'd give you a good night out. Be quiet when the show's on. Oh, sorry, mister. Have a peanut. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the high spot of my show, my pièce de résistance, mass hypnotism. <laughs> Ain't it exciting, Alfie? I can feel me vest creeping up me back. <laughs> Don't talk to daft. Keep quiet. Yes, Alfie, keep quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, gathered here tonight, will you all clasp your hands together, interlocking your fingers? I've clasped mine, Alfie. Have you clasped yours? No, but I've clasped mine into a fist. <laughs> now concentrate on me, all of you. Look at me. And concentrate on my voice. Now your hands are clasped together. I shall cast a spell on you, and your hands will become firmly locked together. Your fingers will not bunch. The harder you pull, the tighter they'll become. The harder you pull, the tighter they'll become. The harder you pull, the tighter they'll become. The tighter they'll become. Until now, the spell is complete. There are those of you among my audience who cannot now separate their hands. Alfie, I can separate my hands. And I said it was all nonsense. <laughs> can you see anybody who can't unfasten their hands? Well, of course I can't. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I, I think there's one bloke over there. Where? Where? Point him out to me. Over there, near the... Near the... Oh, heck. <laughs> What's up? My hands. I can't unclasp them. Give me look, they're, they're stuck together. I wish your jaws were in all. <laughs> yeah, I was right, wasn't I? Some of you are helpless under my spell. Only I can release your hands. Well, will you all come up onto the stage, please? Go on, Alfie, off you go. Oh, I don't want to go up there. You've got to, or else you'll never get your hands unfastened. And think what that'll mean. Every time your man puts your shirt in the machine to wash it, she'll have to put you in as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to prove that these people are really under my spell, I shall first put them to sleep and hypnotise them so that when they awake they will feel completely normal until they hear a whistle. Immediately, they will become whatever was mentioned when they heard the whistle. And they will remain so until a second whistle restores them to normality. Well, so far, ladies and gentlemen, we have had the lady who did the imaginary fan dance and the gentleman who thought he was Napoleon. <clears throat> and now to this gentleman here, who, as we can all see, is also in a deep hypnotic sleep. <laughs> Your name, sir? Alfred Cyrilo. <laughs> well, I never knew that before. <laughs> Alfie's a soppy Cyril. <laughs> hey, hey, son, 
Put your head under that tip-up seat while I sit on it. <laughs> now, when I clap my hands, Mr. Hall, you two will awake and feel perfectly normal. Do you understand? I understand. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Hall, I command you to awake. <laughs> yeah, well, I never heard the alarm go up. <laughs> of course, I remember now, I'm here. <laughs> you feel all right now, Mr. Hall? Yeah, perfectly, thank you. Uh, you don't feel like um, a dog, for instance? What? <laughs> oh! Everybody laughing at. Take no notice, Alfred. You're an uncle. Go and chase a tomcat. <laughs> hey, I shall tell you again. Tell me, Mr. Hall, are you interested in uh, boxing? Oh, no. no. I don't like boxing. Well, then you'll never wish to be a boxer like, say, uh, Cassius Clay. Yeah, man, I'm beautiful. <laughs> If I thought a fellow as big as King Kong that dropped me one right after the gong, you are. Oh, oh! <laughs> all right, all right, you can stop shadow boxing. <laughs> well, at me nose, it. Uh, you hit it with your fist, Mr. Hall. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell me, do you sing at all? It may go, oh, no. No, I never wanted to be a singer. I don't think my voice is quite good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come, Mr. Hall, have you never wished you were uh, yeah, a beetle? It's been a hard day's night. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I still don't believe I made a fool of myself like you said I did. First, please. Two lilas, Gary New. East Payne. All right, that'll be eight pence, sir. <laughs> uh, evening, Vicar. Yeah, oh, good evening, my child. <laughs> Tell me, are you one of my flock? Hey, Sully. Uh, what's the matter with him? He thinks you're a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the announcement for the Harvest Festival. Will all the ladies kindly lay their eggs in the vestry? <laughs> well, hey, that's a joke my granddad once told him. He must think he's a real vicar. Oh, but that's a real vicar, him, dozing on the front seat there. I know. We've been to see a hypnotist at the Civic Hall and he put a spell on Alfie. Well, you mean he's still under the influence? Woe unto ye, I've never touched a drop in my life. <laughs> Very late would offend the bishop. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'd forgotten it's the whistle that brings him out of it. It's unbelievable. I thought he said it was eightpence. <laughs> what? what, what it, not, not the eightpence, the other, because you said you couldn't believe it, and I don't remember what it was you were saying, what it was. Oh, thank goodness. He's all right again. Yeah, if he's all right, I'm the Shah of Persia. <laughs> Gleetings, oh, illustrious one. <laughs> No, son, but I put the kettle on again. It won't be long. You and me granddad had your tea early, didn't you? Has he found a new pub that opens at five o'clock? <laughs> That's enough. The way you go on, you'd think he did nothing but drink. Oh, he eats and sleeps as well. <laughs> oh, you are cheeky. We're going to look at a carpet and the shop closes at six. So make yourself another cup of tea when the kettle boils and tell Susan Amelia's in the oven. Yes, ma'am. And don't start fighting with them while we're out. Right, Mum. If she starts any trouble, I promise I won't clout her until you get back. <laughs> you won't do anything at all. 
Go and shut your granddad to hurry up or we'll be late. Right, Mum. Would you like me to spring clean the house as well while you're out? <laughs> Don't you talk to me like that. Uh, sorry, Mum. I'll go and shout my granddad. Yes, and be quick about it. Or you'll be shouting when I'm smacking your bottom. No, I was only kidding, Mum. Grown-ups just don't have no sense of humour. <laughs> Grandad, my mum says hurry up or you'll be late. All right, all right, I'm just putting my shirt on. If you're going shopping, I should put your trousers on as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mum, I'll see who it is. I hope it's a telegram to say my auntie's adopted Susan. <laughs> I could eat some more steak pie. Hello, it's you. Hello, Jim. Wait a minute. That face, that voice, the crash helmet on the side of your head. Of course, you're Peter O'Toole. <laughs> I'm in no mood for your jokes, I hope. No, it's not Peter O'Toole. It's Alfie O'Twit. <laughs> hey, now, don't get me annoyed. I've had all I can stand today. What's the matter? That blooming Marvello, it hasn't worn off. Yeah, I still go under the fluence every time I hear a whistle. What happens? My mind keeps going blank. I know that, but what happens when you hear a whistle? My mind keeps... I'll clout you. I mean, what have you done when you were under the influence? What have I done? When my mum whistled a cat, I nearly broke my leg trying to wash the back of my neck with me foot. <laughs> <laughs> the bloke next door whistled his dog and I bit him. And when I went to the front door to get our milk, my dad whistled and said, Sophia Lorena, I opened the door and kissed the milkman. <laughs> Tell them the truth, did you? Of course I did. I don't want them to think I've gone daft. Well, don't you dare let on to my mob. They think I was decorating the church hall last night. But I'll have to tell Susan. That's why I come round. Tell Blabbermouth. You will not. Anyway, she's not back from my auntie's yet. Oh, well, she's coming because I'm supposed to take her out tonight. Now I can't. Of course you can. Stuff cotton wool in your ears, then you can't hear any whistles. I wouldn't be able to hear Susan, then. That's another good reason. <laughs> and if you wore a blindfold, you wouldn't have to look at a scraggy clock. Yeah, I like looking at Susan's scraggy... Uh, Susan's face. Anyway, that's not it. I went to the Civic Hall today and they said Marvello was giving a show at an army depot near here, so I've got to go there and see him tonight. You're a glutton for punishment. What do you want him to do this time? Turn you into a frog? I want him to make me normal. Oh, even he's not that clever. <laughs> you are asking for it, my lad. Jimmy, if that's Alfie, bring him into the living room for a cup of tea. Right, Mum. Listen, Alfie, not a word about your fluence. Come on. All right. But, but I don't see why you should always get off so easy. Hello, Alfie. Oh, Jimmy, will you make some tea? His granddad and I are just going out. Ah, oh, thanks, Mrs. Clitheroe. I came round to see Susan. Yes, I rather guessed that. I didn't think you'd, um, well, come round to move the furniture. Ah, oh, go with this table, Sammy. <laughs> I'll have a job getting it through the door. Elfie, Elfie, what are you doing? Moving the furniture. <laughs> oh, well, it's too heavy for one. I'll get the chairs out first. Oh, stop it, you clock. That'll fix... Oh, whoa! What's up? Oh, heck, the kettle's still going. Alfie, if this is a joke, it's not funny. Stop banging my table. Move your feet till I get the carpet up. <laughs> oh, heck. I'll turn the kettle off. It's just this fun, Mum. Alfie, don't lift that sideboard. There's crockery in it. How can I move it without lifting it, you dozy-looking oh. woman? <laughs> Stop! Uh, hello, Mrs. Clitheroe. Oh, thank goodness. Hello, indeed. Have you been drinking, Alfie? Dozy looking woman. Who is? Uh, Mama, I think my granddad's ready. What? Oh, yes. Really, Alfie, you surprise me sometimes. Oh, like, what was I off again? I mean, doing it, G going for me. <laughs> yeah, who was that? Uh, stop joking, Alfie. <laughs> He's a kidder, isn't he, Mum? Well, I'm not laughing, and neither would Alfie be if he'd knocked over my sideboard. <laughs> Good, it's me granddad. Are you ready to go, Father? Ah, but I don't look in where I'm going, the noon. <laughs> you are? I am ready, Pat. My daughter was talking to me yesterday, old Hootsman. Oh, heck! Shh! 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 Oh, heck, I've lost me whistle. Grandad, whistle! Whistle, Grandad! What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> 
my wee grandson was talking to me, you wet haggis. <laughs> Thank goodness I found me whistle. Oh, <laughs> hello, Mr. Sinclair. Ah, oh, so you're pulling my leg, are you? Well, I don't like it. So cut it out or I'll pull you up by your ears. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't understand it. Oh, I, I, I've, been, I've been again, away, off it. I keep going. I think you've gone round the bend. <laughs> oh, look at the time. Come on, Father, we'll be late. Right, my dear. I used to think you were a fool, Alfie. Now I'm sure. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Alfie. I'm not sure you ought to be going out with our Susan. Now, that does it, Jimmy. I'm going to tell him the truth. Oh, no, don't! Mrs. Clither or Mr. Sinclair, there's something I want to say to you both. What is it, Alfie? You're a sheep. Well, what do you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any. I just want to see Susan and then go to the army camp. I don't blame you. When I see a face, I want to go in the Foreign Legion. <laughs> shut up. Shut it. J just shut it. Shut your mouth. Anybody would think you didn't like me. Hello, I'm home. I don't like you, you little Laura. You heard that, Susan, so leave him alone. What do you mean? It's you I don't like. Don't worry, Alfie. I know who you're talking to. My delinquent brother. That's right, Susan. He's the delinquent I don't like. How about my delinquent sister? I like your delinquent sister. <laughs> Susan, I mean. Well, I'll go and put my case away, and then you can tell me where you're taking me tonight. To the zoo. There are monkey shorts. <laughs> Belt up, you. Look, Alfie, you're not going to tell her the truth, are you? Well, I've got to, otherwise I'll have to take her to the pictures or something. Well, not if you weren't friends. But we are friends. Well, have a row, a fight. I, I, I'll have a fight, all right. Put your fists up. <laughs> you Alfie. I won't be a second, then I'll deal with him. I'm sorry about it, Alfie. About what? About what I've got to do to you. Yeah, now, look here. I'm, 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 I'm... Your old man stepped on, and she's after your money. <laughs> That. Now, where are you taking me tonight? I'm taking you nowhere, you money grabbing little baggage. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him! Go and find another mug, you little bloodsucker. <laughs> You've gone too far, Alfie Hall. I'm not standing for this. Oh, God! <laughs> Shall I deal with a pater? Yeah, give her a punch up the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> time, Sonny. No unauthorised person's allowed past this guardroom into the camp. But, Sergeant, the great Marvello's doing a show here tonight and we've got to see him. It's a matter of life and death. It will be if you try to go through there. I'll shoot you. But I've told you, he put the fluence on Alfie here and, and we want him cured. Yeah, but I've got to get rid of it. Off me. Stop it whistling. When I hear it, I go bonkers. That I can believe. <laughs> but this rubbish about you becoming different things, well... Charles Lawton. This is beautiful. Uh, if you don't get out of my way, I'll have you hung from the highest yard arm in Plymouth Harbour. That was a mistake. You sounded more like Godfrey Wynn. <laughs> yeah, now, now, stop wasting my time. A bull. Moo. 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 Next. A duck. <laughs> If you're not satisfied with that, I'll get him to lay an egg. Hey, now watch it. There's no need to do overdo things, you know. You are asleep in a deep sleep, a deep, deep sleep. I hope this works, Mr. Marvello. Quiet, boy. <clears throat> you are asleep, Alfie Hall. Who is driving the pigs home all right? He can't hear me. Only Mr. Marmel and the pigs. Why, <laughs> oh, that's a big one. <laughs> oh, you reckon that'd be the old sow? <laughs> and them's her little piglets. Hey, make him do Pinky and Perky. <laughs> when you awake, 
wig, Elfie Hall, you will be your normal self, as you were before you ever met me. When I clap my hands, you will awake. Now, awake! Damn you, Bill Wobble. Ooh, where am I? Ooh, it's you. Am I done? You are now your normal self again. You are your old self once more, as you always were. You, you mean I'm cured? No, you're the same as you always were. <laughs> I must get back to the show. Yeah, well, I'll show you across the square, sir. Ah, yeah. oh, thank you, Mr. Marvellous, you umbrella. I mean, for full marvels. <laughs> it's quite all right. I'll follow you then, Sergeant. Here's this way, sir, I must say. That was very impressive, sir. Very oh, thank goodness that's over. Well, I'll test myself out. I'll have a whistle. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Alfie. But why not? I'm cured. Here goes. <whistles> a dog. Oh, yeah, Jim, I'm cured. Hey, Jim, I'm cured. <laughs> Jim, what are you looking like that for? Stop it, stop it. Get out, get out, get out, get out, Mr. me like you are. Those involved with the Clitheroe kit this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, with Brian Truman and John Graham. The recorded programme was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. I thought I'd better come back to tell you I was only kidding, Alfie. <laughs> I wasn't under the fluence. The family found out about Alfie being hypnotised, but he didn't tell them about me. He was going to, but I whistled, shouted, Sweeney Todd, and picked up the bread knife. He was out of the room that fast, he had to come back for his feet. <laughs> Ta-ra! <laughs>